have quite a strong tradition of decentralism within the Green Party. I don't have to be proud of it. It's about putting power into the hands of the members. But as we become more successful, I kind of see that there can, there can be tension whereby one local party may make a decision that wouldn't be made by another local party. And so how, what I'm asking is how do we manage accountability to the broader philosophy of the party, while at the same time communicating the fact that we have this kind of decentralized structure and allowing this to continue without becoming a centralized party and the pressures of success build up. Okay, uh, this time uh, the order is going to be Natalie, then Peter, then May, then Deborah. Okay, so Natalie, First of all, I, mean, I think it's absolutely right that the Green Party believes in localism. The Green Party believes in decisions being made as local a level as possible. And that's something I absolutely support. But what that's too often being interpreted as, both in terms of the operations of local parties and their decisions, which is what you're particularly referring to there, is right, off you go, go and run your party. Sink or swim. It'll either work or it won't. And sometimes it works very well, sometimes it kind of muddles along, and sometimes it turns into an absolute disaster. And, you know, unfortunately, we've, we've all seen one or two of those. Um, what we need to do is, you know, I'm very much promoting the West Midlands model. There was a reference to this in the, in the deputies' discussion. Um, in the West Midlands, they've gone from, in two years, they've gone from three councillors on three councils to 12 councillors on seven councils. And they've done that by working as a region, working as a team. And now, they haven't got any special powers in West Midlands. They haven't suddenly centralised everything to say, you know, someone can just dictate that's how you do it. What they've done it is by saying, Here's a whole lot of support and services we can offer you, a whole lot of best practice guides to, from everything to how you welcome a new member, to how you make you know, decisions about what your policy should be to help support your councillors. And if you sign up to this and you want to be involved and you want to be one of our priority seats, then you have to meet these criteria. So I think that's one of the things that we can really do, is offer to local parties a, you know, a series of support and guidance and help, not leave them just to sink or swim, but actually you know, provide the framework and that's what we need in terms of you know, a party for the particular purpose as a party that provides those supports and those guidances. And you know, the West Midland shows what's possible when we do that. Okay, thank you. Um, a couple of things. I'll do the, the more recent thing first. We are a decentralised party. That throws up problems, it throws up issues when it, when it comes comes along and we'll suddenly think, right, how do we deal with this? And I think that's that's the problem. We don't prepare. The National Party doesn't offer support. The National Party hasn't necessarily, when local parties have got into positions either where they've been supporting the coalition formally or informally, or whether they're now, as in the case in Brighton, mm -hmm. an administration. We've not prepared for that. And then those local parties are left to kind of fend for themselves. So uh, we then end up with issues that potentially can come up. And I'll, I'll come to an example on that. But the key thing for me in terms of what we do differently is we start to prepare. So before we win councils, before we actually are in a position where actually we might be holding the balance of power in a local area, we actually are having that discussion at national level. What's going to be our strategy? Are we going to go for a confidence and supply model? Are we going to go for a formal coalition? What are our red lines? What won't we cross? And that's important because of an issue that I dealt with when I was elections coordinator of the party from 2004 to 2007. Leeds Greens were in coalition uh, up there and it was a coalition which many of us were uncomfortable of because it was with the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives. And it was a difficult situation and there was this incinerator on the table. <laughs> and Leeds Green Party were in this unfortunate position where they were potentially going to have to vote for an incinerator to stay within that coalition to do what they potentially wanted to do from a green perspective. What I actually did was I went and spoke with one of the councillors in Leeds, we sat down, we had a discussion, we explained how that would play out elsewhere in the country, the implications, the fact that this was a red line for the party and Leeds Green Party didn't go ahead and support that. So I think a big thing is communication and a big thing is about persuasion if you're in a leadership role. Thank I think one of the strengths that we have as a party is our federated structure and our decentralisation. And I think there are sometimes um, issues where 
locally you need to, to look at uh, uh, what is happening on the ground and in your specific community whether you're in a town, you know, a city or out in a rural area and that could uh, affect how you make a decision but based on Green Party policy. Um, I agree that we absolutely need to have more built-in support because we are definitely on the up. We are going to grow. Um, I was down in Brighton to have conversations with councillors who agreed to meet with me and local party members before the difficult Brighton budget decision. Um, but I was welcomed down. I was a little bit, I had, you know, I was a little bit anxious about going down there. I didn't want a bust up or a confrontation, but I did want to see if Bright councillors felt that it was a discussion that should be had within the wider party, which hadn't happened before the time that they were going to make their decisions. And Jason, councillor Jason Kitkat, had said to me that yes, he did agree that it was a discussion because it had ramifications for the whole party that should be had, but the structure hadn't been in place properly in order to support or have that debate, and there should be space for that, I believe, at conference. But I'm also concerned about uh, preserving and protecting local democracy, because I know what it's like to be in an elected group and to have your party members around you, and I think it is important. None of us get elected on our own. It's the work of everybody in your local party. They are all part of your party, and they need to be listened to, and I would like to protect the democracy of our party by protecting local parties. Thank you. Well, I'm a pretty hands-on sort of person. Um, it's the way I am. I've started up four businesses from scratch, and each one I got better and better. So I know what it is like starting something from scratch. Um, and starting a, a local party in a kind of vacuum of, of, of pretty little knowledge but lots of enthusiasm needs help and support. Now in Wales we've got new parties popping up everywhere and they contact me because I'm the most visible person. And one of the things I do is say, right, I'm coming out to see you. If you want to write a press release or you need help writing a uh, press release, I'll help you with that. If you've got a local campaign, something going on, you want to join it, let's help you with that. Have you seen Party in a Box? It's on the members' website. It's been recently revamped by Matt Townsend. So there is a lot that all of us can do to help other parties, uh, other regions uh, of the party. But local parties do need geeing up. And we mustn't forget that. But you know, it's, it's sometimes you just have meetings and you think, where are we going, where are you going? And, and part of the leader's job is motivation. I mean, the first is communication, but I believe the second is motivation. To empower local parties, <coughs> local regions, to empower them to have the courage to stand, to have the courage to grow their local group, to have the courage to write press releases. So if we're going to grow the membership of this party, it's the regions and the small local parties are the key to it. They're probably the most important part of all. So I'll be there. I'll do everything I can.